In this lesson, let's talk about something that I regard as being very fundamental to working in Photoshop Elements, and those are different types and sizes and unique ways to use brushes. Now, we use brushes for more than painting. They're used for clone tools, healing brushes, all kinds of things. So say you're cloning something, and you're cloning into a corner. Wouldn't it be nice to have a square brush? Lots of different ways we can use them. We're going to start from scratch. So nothing selected. Click Editor. File New, Blank File, I'm going my usual, typical 640 by 480, and I'm going to double click the Zoom tool so it gets to 100%. I'm also going to create a new layer to paint in. Okay, there we go, now we're ready. Go over and pick up your paintbrush tool. Select the general brush right here, just the paintbrush. Now we know how this tool works. If we come over here, we can paint with it. Now remember the shortcut keys, the left and right brackets, if you want to take whatever brush you have and make it larger or smaller. Now I'm going to press Control A, that's Command A on a Mac, Control A in Windows, and press Delete so that I can get rid of everything up there and kind of clean our slate off. Your first shortcut, if you want to draw straight lines, you come over here and you click. Now move to where you want to draw the straight line to, hold the Shift key down and click again. As long as you're holding the Shift key down, it will draw straight lines for you which is actually kind of nice when you think about it. Kind of a down and dirty way to do it, but it draws straight lines. Again, let me get rid of what we have. One of the other tricks I don't think I have shared with you, the left and right brackets do indeed make the brush larger or smaller. Our brush has a rather harsh edge to it. If I want to soften the edge, the same two bracket keys, but use the shift key also. So if I shift left bracket once or twice, I get a softer edge. If I do the right bracket, it goes back to being hard. The more left I go, the more right I go. Softer, harder brush. So shift keys and bracket keys do different things. Again, let me get rid of what we have. Now we know if we come over here, we can choose a different brush in the default brushes. But you have all kinds of brushes. You have a plethora of brushes. Calligraphics, dry medias, faux finish brushes. And I'm going to show you how you make your own. Why? Because Adobe may have given us a thousand brushes or whatever, but you know what? If they gave us a million brushes, I guarantee sooner or later you'd want to make your own brush. But let's still work with what we have. If we go into the defaults and keep going down, eventually you're going to get into some interesting brushes. There's one here. Let me see if I can find it. There it is. It's grass. Now check out how this thing works. It's very unique. It's scattering the grass and even changing the shades of gray to give it some kind of prominence. That's actually pretty interesting. Now let's go ahead again and get rid of it. And let's go back to a more mundane brush. Let's try something like some of the ones we've been using. Like say that one. There we go. Mundane brush. Let's come over here. Now we know size can be changed here. Here's opacity. We even have blending modes if you want to use them. Let's go into brush settings for now. Now the first thing you have is a fade, a technique we use in watercolor in oil in the real world. Load up a fan brush with just so much oil or watercolor and move it across the canvas until you run out of ink and basically it fades. Well, if we use ours now, it never runs out of ink. But if I go back in here again and change fade, say to about uh, 20 or 30, see what it's showing you down here? It's showing you what it's going to do. If I come over here, it eventually fades out. So you can do like a water or an oil color kind of effect by using fade. Let's go ahead and get rid of what we have and go back here and turn that off. Now you have something called U Jitter. In order to show you that, let me do this. Let me come over here and click the foreground color and change that from black to something else. And I'm going to do the same thing to the background, foreground, background, maybe a blue. Click OK. Now we know if we work, we get red because red's the foreground color. If we come back into brush settings and we change the hue jitter, we're saying begin to mix the foreground and background colors together and give me a whole bunch of things, a kaleidoscope. All right, kind of a multicolored snake. Let me go ahead and delete that, go back into brush settings. Let's leave that one on and let's look at scatter. Now what scatter does, you can see, they're no longer one solid line, 
it's individual things being scattered. You can do some really cool backgrounds and things if you think about it. And again, I'm going to get rid of that. Let's go back into brush settings. Let me go ahead and take these back down like that. And I'll tell you what, let me go ahead and just make that black and white for now. Let's go back into brush settings. So our fade and our U and our scatter are down. We still have the 25% on spacing. Now, what's that? Well, when you come over here and click, basically you're going to get just a little dot like that, right? If I click and drag, it's actually creating our brush stroke. Let me go ahead and get rid of that stuff. If I come over here again and change the spacing, say, to 100%, yeah, 100%. Now, watch what happens when I use it. See, it actually begins to change and give me a brush shape every 100%. I let go of the shift key right there. But if you keep doing this, that's what it's going to do for you. It's going to change the spacing. That's pretty interesting. Let's come back in here again and take that back down to 25%. Now, anytime you want to go to a regular brush again, if you want to just kind of reset everything, you come over here and pick the brush up over here. Come back over here and all the settings are back to the way they were normally. Now, hardness we know. That's the softness of the brush. We can do that with a shift, left, and right bracket. Roundness of the brush is based on moving this slider or coming over here and changing it by clicking like here. So if I do that, and then I do, say, this, about 45 degrees, I've got a calligraphic brush, don't I? I come over here and do calligraphy. All the different settings on our brushes help us to individualize them to do just about anything we want. Now, let's go ahead and do Control A, Delete. What if I want to make my own brush? How do I do that? It's actually extremely simple. But I'll tell you what. Let's not just draw something on the screen and call it a brush. Let's go into our graphics right down here. And let's make a brush out of something here. We got all kinds of graphics. How about that one right there? A bear. Double click. There's our bear. Go back to layers. Let's go ahead and simplify it. I don't want that big of a brush either. So what I'm going to do is come over to it, do a control T, which of course is a free transform. And let's make that guy a little bit smaller. Maybe like that. Now actually you can change the size of the brush using your left and right brackets, even customized brushes. But I want him as a brush. Understand also that the color that you use for the brush is not determined when you make the brush. It's determined when you change the foreground color and you use it. Black is usually what we make our brushes in. Now come over here and pick up, say, your rectangular marquee tool and give yourself a little bit of a selection around the part that you want as a brush, just like that. Turn off the background so he's laying against transparency. Come up to the word edit on the pull down menu and go down to define brush from selection. That's going to ask for a name. I think that's a bear. I'm going to say bear. Click OK. Now, we don't need this one anymore. We can delete it. Let's turn back on our background so we get something to look against. Let's pick up our paintbrush tool. If you go into your brushes, it typically is the last one in the list. Now, we can come over here and do that, but that's not what I want to do. So, tell you what. Number one, let's change our colors. Let's have some fun. Come back over here to brush settings. Fade we'll leave alone. But we do want to bounce between the foreground and the background. We want to scatter our brush. And we want maybe a little bit of spacing. And we come over here. Hey, we got bears everywhere. All right. Now, when I use a brush like this in a scatter, a lot of times I am using it to create a background, like a background of a mat of autumn leaves. I mean, the permutations here are endless when you think about it. But let me show you one more thing while we are here, because we just made a brush, didn't we? And it was at the end of the list. Go up to the word Edit on the pull-down menu and go down to Preset Manager right here. Now, the Preset Manager has all the different areas like swatches that we work with in Elements. And there's our little guy right there. If you want to move him somewhere else, go for it. You say, I don't know why I even did that brush, Andy. I don't like it. You can select it and delete it or rename it. Or you can make your own set of brushes 
based on other brushes and have it appear in this list when you need it. Now, in our case, I'll tell you what, we'll go ahead and select them and say bye bye, bear. And now we're back where we started. Don't forget you have a preset manager for brushes, swatches, gradient styles, patterns, and effects. All the things that we use. Click Done if you are finished. And there you go. Let's just close what we have. Even though I did delete that brush, it still remembers that brush until I choose a different brush. Go ahead and say Don't Save. Incidentally, if you do create new brushes and you don't save the document you created them in and you don't delete them through the preset manager, they will be there for you the next time you need them in any document that you open. Let's get back into our organizer and there you go. Brushes.